What's going on? My name is Eric. Welcome to the Stabob Show. I really appreciate you being here with me. This is my first 2023 NFL mock draft. We are on the NFL mock draft database simulator because the draft network is still down. Not sure how long that's going to take to get back up, but regardless, it is still early December. So keep in mind, my opinion on these prospects will change. I have not even gotten a thorough scouting report on all these guys yet, but most of them I have a pretty solid opinion on. We're going to go ahead and get started. This is the official draft order if the season were to end today. So uh, I'm really excited. As a Colts fan, it's about all I got to look forward to. So we're going to go right into it. Not going to talk too much more. Uh, first pick is the Houston Texans. Got to be Bryce Young, right? I mean, I'm not going to talk too much about it. Everybody knows he's probably going first overall. There are reports that some teams aren't sold on his size. Some teams like Will Levis. But honestly, I think his size is fine as far as playing quarterback. Uh, 180 pounds is light. It might be a problem as far as injury concerns, but I don't think it's going to limit his ability to play. So you take him there and hope he can put on a few pounds, but even if he can't, he's a great quarterback. Just got to try to keep him clean in the pocket, I guess. Uh, number two, Chicago. I'm not doing trades today, but this would be a possible trade down spot if Bryce Young were not to go first overall, especially somebody could uh, be looking to jump up here and get him before the other QB needy teams could. But that's not going to happen here in my mock. Uh, it's either going to be Will Anderson or Jalen Carter, right? That's what everybody knows, kind of thinks at this point, most people at least. And uh, I think with the Bears front office, they would prefer Jalen Carter. But uh, again, it's 50-50, whoever you want. They're both game-breaking prospects. You're happy with either one. You're never going to look back and regret taking them. So we're going to go with Jalen Carter here at two, which leaves Seattle at three. Uh, they're ecstatic to have this pick out of that trade, by the way. That, that whole situation is still crazy. I won't get into it. but So Seattle, who do they need? A uh, good amount of defenders, but it's obviously Will Anderson here, right? Again, some people think they might take quarterback. I'm not on that train. Geno is fine. I don't think he's great, but I don't think there's a quarterback here screaming, you got to take me. So if I'm Seattle, I'm settling with Will Anderson, like I just said for Jalen Carter. Even if a quarterback you don't pick turns out great, you're not going to look back and be like, damn, I wish I didn't take Will Anderson there. He's going to be good. You're just going to walk away happy. This isn't even Seattle's pick, so they're taking this and running. At four, we got Arizona. This was a pick for a long time that I was leaning corner. But now that J.J. Watt is announcing a retirement, they're going to be very weak at edge, too. They already needed edge help. Now J.J. Watt not returning is not helping that situation. And I think it really boils down to I like Miles Murphy and Tyree Wilson a lot better than I like any of the corners. Not a lot better, but I, I think if you're picking at four, it might be a bit of a reach for a corner. Not too bad. If you want to take one, go for it. But I'm going to go Miles Murphy. Him and Tyree Wilson are close for me, both good run defenders. Miles Murphy needs to polish his pass rush moves a little bit, but I think he's going to be a good player. Again, I don't think the Cardinals are going to regret taking him, so you just take him while you're here, in my opinion, and prove the uh, pass rush. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit on this one because we're down to the two quarterbacks everybody's kind of debating, Stroud or Levis, Levis or Stroud, who do you prefer? And I'm a Colts fan, so we're sitting here, we got to pick. This is the future, you got to pick right, and it's a big deal. So, as a Colts fan, I'm just excited we're in this position. We've needed this for a while. We just need a quarterback. So, Stroud or Levis, I'm happy. Obviously, Bryce Young as well. Probably not happening, though. Who do I want? I'm not quite sure. If you asked me last week, it'd be a different answer than it is today, and it's probably going to change again before draft day. As it stands right now, I would pick Will Levis, and I will tell you why. I'm not super confident in either prospect. I like them both. I think they're both great. But as a Colts fan, we've been spoiled. We had Peyton and we had Andrew Luck, where when you draft those guys, you know they're going to be the shit. They're, you don't got to worry about it. Stroud and Levis have worries. They have cons in their game, as every prospect does. So, I don't like either player's footwork. Levis' decision-making is terrible, and Stroud is terrible under pressure. That's pretty much sums up what they are bad at. Now, what are they good at? C.J. Stroud has elite ball placement elite accuracy, touch on the ball is great, in a clean pocket, he's got good prototypical size, he's mobile enough, he doesn't really run, he's more of a pocket passer, but again, clean pocket, Stroud is going to deal the football, he's going to put the ball where you need it, wherever you need it, he's got good arm talent, I like him, he would have to improve his footwork and have to get better under pressure to be a successful NFL quarterback, which is fine, all prospects usually have something they need to work on, that's why they're prospects, now, Will Levis, also hate his footwork, it's terrible, his accuracy is not an issue, as most people think it is. I think most of his accuracy problems stem from his footwork. So if you fix the footwork, I think your accuracy gets better as well. But it does need worked on. 
his fucking head, man. He just needs to learn how to read a defense and play football sometimes. He makes some throws and some decisions that just make me so mad. It reminds me of Josh Allen uh, early in his career where he'd make a play. They'd be like, God damn, they've got a guy. And then they make another play and you're like, God damn, what is he doing? You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. But I think if they're both prospects I'm not 100% sold on and have things they need to work on, I'm shooting for the moon. And Will Levis, in my opinion, has a chance. He's got it in him to become that Mahomes, Josh Allen, Herbert, Burrow, Lamar, Trevor Lawrence-like tier guy. Now, I'm not saying he's going to be better than those guys. I'm not saying he's going to be Patrick Mahomes. But Stroud, even if he fixes his problems, I think is more looking at like a little bit better Dak Prescott kind of thing. If Will Levis figures his problems out, he's going to be Josh Allen. So it's not super likely that he becomes that, but I'm shooting for it. I'm going to go Will Levis as it stands right now. Now this pick six, Atlanta, is weird. Sorry, I just talked forever. Like I said, that's the big debate in the draft for me right now with Stroud or Levis. So I kind of wanted to elaborate on my reasoning for that, especially since I am a Colts fan and that is uh, a big deal to me. So Stroud is still on the board. We got Atlanta picking here. A lot of people might want to go Stroud, and I'm tempted to. I'm not going to lie. I recorded once and did this, and I had them taking Stroud, and I already did this because I changed my mind. I don't understand why they wouldn't. I feel like you just got to get a quarterback, but I just I, I don't know. I feel like they're going to give Ritter more time. He had a solid game. He had a terrible, terrible first game. The second game is a little better. I just feel like there is reason to believe the Falcons will not be good enough to where they're out of range for a quarterback next year. They could take a good defensive piece, help their defense get really good, not really good, but better, and then take a quarterback next year if they're more confident in that class. I could see that. So that's what I'm going to do. I think Tyree Wilson makes sense, but I also think C.J. Stroud makes sense. A lot of me wants to take Stroud. I don't see a lot of people doing it, but it makes sense to me. But I've talked myself out of it. I'm going to go Tyree Wilson here and give Ritter a year to see what they've gotten him before they decide to replace him that quick. So we're going to go Tyree Wilson. I think he's a good player. Always can improve edge rush, no matter who your team is, essentially. Very few teams could not use an edge rusher. So now we're on to Detroit. Uh, There is one rule of thumb for Detroit this year, and it is do not take an offensive player. Their offense is fine. Their defense is abysmal. They need to take a defensive player in the top 10 and try to help fix what they got going on over there. A lot of people want Stroud here. I see that a lot. It's even the suggestion on this website. But to me, Stroud reminds me a lot of Jared Goff. Great from a clean pocket, good accuracy, good touch on the ball, can read a defense all right. But under pressure, he's just not that good of a quarterback. If he has a great structure around around him, pardon me, he will be. But I don't see the point of replacing Jared Goff this year unless you think you've got like a, you know, if Bryce Young fell, maybe you're like, okay, there's there could be something there that could really elevate this team. Uh, I don't think Stroud, at least the next year or two, is going to give you a whole lot of an upgrade over Goff. So uh, he's not tempting me enough to take quarterback. So I'm going defense, as I mentioned before. And uh, I'm tempted to go corner. I'm not not a huge fan of Brzee. I really am not. I We'll talk about that more later when it gets to him. Uh, I'm probably going corner here because the edges that I would prefer are off the board. Jalen Carter is really the only interior guy I like here. It's too early for any linebackers. Brian Branch would be obviously a pretty big reach. You want to go safety, so that obviously just leaves the corner room. And there are some corners I like. Now, Keely Ringo is still apparently their number one. He's not mine. He's still really good. I love this corner class. But personally, it's between these two guys, Joey Porter and Christian Gonzalez. I really like them both. But my corner one is Joey Porter. I'm going to take him here. I think his understanding of the field, he's just, he's a great, a great player. I really like Joey Porter. I think he's going to be very good. He, I think he's going to thrive, especially him and Akuda can both, you know, help the pass game over there and then they can work. They got another first round pick. They'll work on uh, stopping the run or getting to the quarterback. Aiden Hutchinson's been good, but anyways, that defense just needs help. And I think Joey Porter is that help. So now on to Carolina, they are ecstatic that C.J. Stroud made it here. I'm not even going to think about it. They need a quarterback. They've needed one badly. Since they passed on fields, they have not been able to figure it out. Otherwise, I'm not saying they shouldn't have taken J.C. Horn. He's a stud. But they're not going to make the same mistake again. They're going to draft a quarterback right here because they've got one sitting there. It's not going to be Sam Darnold. C.J. Stroud is going to be the quarterback for the Panthers here. And they're going to be very excited about it. Now, the Raiders at 9. This is an interesting one as well because... 
I don't know what the Raiders are going to look like next year. As I said, I'm recording this late December of 2022, so Derek Carr is still there, Josh Jacobs is still there, Devontae Adams, all that is still going on, but there's a good chance that Josh Jacobs leaves. He's uh, not seemed to enjoy being a Raider from his interviews and everything in the locker room, and he's a free agent. They did not use their uh, fifth-year option on him, so I don't think he's going to be there next year. Uh, Derek Carr, a lot of people think he should get replaced. Lucky for him, there's not a quarterback here worth replacing him. Uh, but he's not played very good. The offensive line is not very good. They're not going to have their star running back. The defense is not very good. I'm not excited for the Raiders' future. And this pick can go a lot of different ways. But I think what I'm going to do is probably just pick a, uh, <clears throat> a player that I think is just going to add value immediately to my team. Because obviously they made that trade for Devontae. They're trying to win right now. Uh, Devontae is not 23 years old. He is over 30. So... They've got to try to help in some way. And again, I would like an edge rusher here. I don't love any of the edge rushers left. So I'm probably going O-line, and I'm going to go Peter Skaronsky. I project him as a guard, but that's fine if you're the Raiders. The Raiders would like a good guard. So if he could play left tackle, great. If not, you're fine having him at guard. Kind of see where he fits best. He's a great lineman, short arms, so we'll see. But that's what I'm going to do for the Raiders. You got Philadelphia here, and this is a pick that kind of it's weird to me. <clears throat> Everything in me wants to draft B. John Robinson here, but I do not think Howie would want to draft a running back in the first round. You're not going to have Miles Sanders next year unless you re-sign him. The team is great all around. You don't really have any weaknesses. And B. John just adds an element to an offense. That offense would be ridiculous with a guy like B. John Robinson, but I just don't think Howie Roseman will draft him. So I'm going to go corner, I think. Not an edge worth taking. Again, I don't like Brzee very much. And you can never have too many corners on a team uh, at all. Corner depth is great. And uh, so I'm just going to go Christian Gonzalez here. I think having a great um, traitsy young corner adds a lot to the Eagles. And this team, just them picking this high is ridiculous. Their roster is already very good. So I think they're just happy with whoever they can get there, snagging another great player for the for the long term. I don't see the problem with that. So we're going to go back to Houston at 11. This is an interesting pick as well because, again, terrible roster here. They could pick anybody. Uh, I love the idea of Quentin Johnston. He is my number one receiver. He has been for months and months. He's just got what it takes. I really like everything about him, his size, his, like, you know, his route running is great, his ability to, you know, change direction, change speeds. Like, he's just a good receiver. I like everything about him. And I'm a big get your receivers or get your quarterback a receiver guy. Look what happened to any young quarterback who got a receiver. Josh Allen got digs and became a superstar. Tua got Tyreek and became a superstar. Jalen Hurts just got A.J. Brown. Look at him. I mean, if you're going to draft Bryce Young, you're going to want him to have a very good, reliable number one. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do and move on to pick 12 with the Seahawks. They already got Will Anderson at three. They were very excited about that. So now what do you do? Now, here is a position where if you want to argue take a quarterback, I might think about it. Because guess what? Anthony Richardson could sit behind Geno Smith for a year or two and then start. Pardon me. I don't see a problem with that. Uh, but I don't know that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to go defense because the defense is very bad. But I would not be mad if you decided to go quarterback here. Uh, but I am probably going to go Keely Ringo. I like him a lot as well. Uh, some people might think it's a little low having in the third corner taken. But I think the top three corners, really Cam Smith as well, are all very good prospects. So uh, it's not really a knock on Keeley. I just prefer the other two a little bit. But uh, I'm going to go Ringo here. Will Anderson and Keeley Ringo in the same draft class. The Seahawks are really happy about that. So I'm going to move on to Tennessee Titans. And uh, this is a team that also has some needs. I'm going to sound like a hater here. I am a Colts fan. But I honestly do not think they have the brightest of futures. Uh, Derrick Henry and Tannehill are both a little bit old. And, uh, I mean, Tannehill's got years left in him, but I don't think he's necessarily the long-term answer. So, I don't know if they really have the brightest future. I Honestly, as much as it sickens me to say, I think the Jaguars kind of have a hold of that division for the next few years at least. But, uh, so they can kind of go a lot of ways. They just need to upgrade the roster where they can. And, uh, in my opinion, that's probably going to be either a receiver or an edge rusher. They could also go offensive line. I... 
might do that, to be honest with you. I think their offensive line has not been that good. I know it hasn't. I'm just talking. But uh, they've just they've needed offensive line help. But, again, I'm tempted to go Jordan Addison here, man. I did not like the A.J. Brown trade for the Titans. I get you didn't want to pay him. Traylon Burks is a baller. But they definitely could use some wide receiver help here. Uh, so I don't hate Jordan Addison. But I also am tempted to take Paris Johnson here. I'm going to go Paris Johnson, I think. I'm torn. They need help at both spots, but their O-line has not been good, and I, I think you should build the trenches, especially if they're trying to win off their run game the next few years. I'll go Paris Johnson. He is my tackle number one probably right now, so I know I took Skaronsky first, but I project him as more of a guard. So uh, I think they're happy with Paris Johnson. Again, tempted to take a receiver. Don't feel like I have to, though, so... I think tackle is maybe more of an important need. Maybe I'm wrong there, but <clears throat> all right. Here I am with the Patriots, number 14. This is another interesting one where the team is honestly a little bit underwhelming. It wants me to take a receiver here. Kendrick Bourne's a free agent. They do need receiver help, so I do not dislike that. Uh, it's probably what I will do. That's what I have done in the past. So, yeah, I'm not going to overthink it too much. Out of the prospects left here, I think Jordan Addison is the one I would definitely go with. This receiver class is underwhelming, in my opinion, compared to recent ones. Quentin Johnson, I love. After that, there's some guys I like. Jordan Addison, though, he can stretch the field. I don't dislike him at all. He's a little underwhelming at US, USC, pardon me. But uh, I think the Patriots still like a guy like that. So, good prospect, not hating on him. I just think there's less, like, you know, home run receivers this year than there have been in the past few. Now, back to the Jets. Um... This is another interesting team. They had a great class last year. Are kind of good out of nowhere, but oh, you know it'd be fun. <laughs> I kind of want to draft Anthony Richardson right here. I'm not gonna lie. That might be crazy. I think I'm gonna do it. Where's he at? This might be crazy. I haven't seen anyone else really do this, but. I do not like Zach Wilson at all, and I am not on the Mike White train. Mike White's fine. He's not going to win you a Super Bowl. The Jets are a roster that's hoping not to be picking very high again anytime soon. Anthony Richardson is a prospect that truly could be a unicorn. Uh, honestly, if he just had a little bit better tape, he'd be a top 10 pick easily this year, but he just he's so you don't know what you're getting with him. He is like... I don't know. It's like you're. It's a huge gamble. He could either be very bad. He could be just like Zach Wilson, and you're like, holy shit, get this guy off the field. But he could also be like a freak. And I mean, like, if Anthony Richardson were to hit his peak, he's easy number one overall pick. It's, you don't even think about it. You take him. So that's that's kind of weird. I'm gonna do it though. Just we'll have some fun. Anthony Richardson to the Jets. Give them a chance because if they hit and he hits where he should or how he could be, that'd be crazy. The Jets would be a very scary team if they had a high-level quarterback like what Anthony Richardson could be. You know, you could lose a lot of money gambling, but you could also become rich. So that's what they're going to do. That's Again, I haven't done that before, but it's kind of struck me. They're going to be having a hard time getting a quarterback otherwise, so swing for the fences. Uh, the Steelers at 16. This is another interesting one. Brzee makes sense here. I do not like him very much, not nearly as much as everyone else. I actually think he's a second-round talent. They have him as a top-10 player on here, which is – interesting to me but uh I know a lot of people like him I'm not one of those people I kind of feel like it's a little too harsh if I don't put him in the first round and uh I also don't want it to be simply off of exactly what I would do I want to also factor in the team and what they would do like again I would have taken Bijan if I was the Eagles don't think they will do that so I didn't do that I wouldn't take Brzee here but I think the Steelers might so that's probably what I'm going to do a lot of people think this is good value. I'm just not a fan of him, but there you go. He's a good player. He's just, I, I think he's overhyped, man. I have him at like 40 on my big board. He's a like early day two guy, or yeah, I, I don't know. Not a big fan as most people are, but he's still a good player. Not hating on him. He's got some things to clean up, and maybe the Steelers are happy with that. They could use some D-line help, so we'll go with that. Uh, Green Bay. This is an interesting one. A lot of people, a lot of people here are going to say Jackson Smith and Jigba. And honest to God, a couple months ago before the year, if you would have told me they would get Jackson Smith and Jigba, 
I would be saying absolutely they'd take him. He is a freaking great prospect. Everybody thought he was going to be the next Jamar Chase, the next elite guy. Pardon me one sec. He was supposed to be really, really good, and he still is. He's a first-round receiver for sure, but I'm not as high on him as a lot of people are. I don't have him as a top-20 prospect. He's probably a couple slots down, which isn't a big deal, but I think he's a little bit slow. And he's just going to be a slot receiver in the NFL. I do not project him as an X or Y receiver. He's going to be a slot receiver. And that's okay. But if I'm the Packers, is that what I want? I mean, yeah, I'm I'm going to take him for the Packers. It makes sense. He's good. He's great at creating separation. He's going to be a good player. But I just wish he had a little more speed and he wasn't limited to the slot. That makes me consider Michael Mayer here because I think he's a great pass catcher as well as a great blocker. He's going to be a very good tight end in the league. Think, you know, Gronk or Kittle more than Kelsey, but still. Uh, But I'm going to go Najigba here. I just think that he uh, is not quite the guy we thought he was before the season, but still a good pick. All right, now for the Detroit Lions at number 18. This is another interesting one. I'm not going to lie. I know I said they have to go defense here. I said earlier they have to take defense, but they got Joey Porter. I'm tempted to go Michael Mayer. They traded Hawkinson, and a lot of Lions fans probably roll their eyes and say they don't want to do a Hawkinson again. I just think he adds so much to an offense. I really do like Michael Mayer, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'll give them a defender because I like Jared Verse a lot. I'm going to take Jared Verse here. I think he's a good player. I think they could use him, but I am tempted to take Michael Mayer there. Because their tight end spot could use a little help, but again, their offense—they have enough pass catchers to, uh, you know, put it off and take a defender. But Michael Mayer is tempting for a lot of these teams. Now we're at Jacksonville right here. This is not somewhere I would take Michael Mayer. I'm actually a big Evan Ingram fan if they retain him. So, uh, <clears throat> pardon me. Tyson Campbell's been great. Otherwise, they need some corner help. But uh, that's not the only position they need help. They need some help on the D line. They could definitely use an offensive lineman. Broderick Jones is a little tempting here. Uh, Walker Little hasn't been the best. He's not bad, but, I mean, he's not great. So, I don't know. It's tempting here to take offensive tackle. But, I mean, man, Jacksonville picking at 19. They're going to the playoffs probably. This is new territory for them. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take Cam Smith. I think the offense is going to be fine next year with Calvin Ridley coming coming back from suspension, his first time playing with the Jaguars. I think the offense is honestly going to be scary. Trevor Lawrence, I've always said people gave up way too early on him. He's going to be an MVP level quarterback soon enough. Ridley might be his A.J. Brown, Tyreek Hill, or Diggs, just saying. So uh, we're going to help the defense out. Cam Smith, great prospect, really like him. If I'm the Jaguars, I'm excited to get him. So uh, was tempted to go tackle, but it's not what I'm going to do. Tampa Bay here. Now, this is another one where I see a lot of teams or a lot of people picking B. John Robinson. And B. John Robinson is such a good prospect that I really, really want to take him here. It makes so much sense for any team to add him to their offense. He's going to be explosive. He's going to add to the ground game and the passing game so much. But I think the Bucs have a lot more problems than just Running back. I mean, they've got Leonard Fournette. He's playing injured right now and not playing great. They got Rashad White, who they like. He can catch passes at the backfield. So I don't necessarily think they should waste their first round pick on a running back. A lot of people do that. That's not what I want to do. But looking ahead, man, somebody's going to do it. I just don't know who. Anyway, I think B. John Robinson, wherever he goes, is going to be a huge value pick. We're going to look back. Like Jonathan Taylor was drafted in the second round. And again, I'm a Colts fan, a little biased here. He was so phenomenal last year when he was healthy. Like, if you're guaranteed to know, like, if you would have known Jonathan Taylor was going to get 2,100 yards and 20 touchdowns, you'd probably take him in the top 10. It's just hard to justify taking a running back that high. But whoever does get him is getting phenomenal value. Not going to be Tampa Bay, though. Uh, I think Foskey is my favorite pick here, simply because I'm not a huge fan of anyone else for their fit. I think edge help matters. I like Foskey. I just think it, it just makes sense. I'm going to go with Foskey here to Tampa. I know that's a little bit different. A lot, every mock I watch, man, I see them getting B. John Robinson, but I think, I think they'll put it off. 
and get a defender. But Commanders here. My brother's a Commanders fan. Shout out to you, Ethan. Let's see what we got. Uh, honestly, Charles Leno is dog ass. He has not been good for weeks now. They need O-line help. They need a quarterback. I would, I would hope if I'm Washington, Anthony Richardson falls here because I would take him. I think this would be a good spot for him to uh, even, you know, take a year to develop behind Carson Wentz if they decide to hold on to him. But I'm going to go Broderick Jones. I think he's a good tackle. I think he's a good value spot for him, right about where I'd expect him to go. And they need O-line help. Not a flashy pick at all, but, I mean, if you're going to get a solid tackle that's going to obviously protect your quarterback, it's never a bad idea. So I'm going to go Broderick Jones to Washington here. All right, New York Giants at 22. This is another interesting one. Now, <laughs> I don't necessarily know exactly what I want to do. Trenton Simpson is looking at me right now. That's probably what I want because this receiver class is just not pretty. I mean, I like Hyatt and Downs. I do, both of these guys. Especially after that, though, I'm not – like, there's just not that many great receivers. I mean, and it's probably a reach for one of those guys here. So, again, maybe a trade down spot if you want to take a receiver – or they could trade up for one of the top receivers. But right here, I do not like taking a receiver. Could be Michael Mayer. Because guess what? He also catches the football. A very good blocker. I Also, Saquon is a free agent. And if they want to save money, they could just draft a Saquon Barkley right here for free. And pay him rookie money. Don't think that's what's going to happen. But it's something to look at. They could take Bijan and let Saquon go. Get a Saquon replacement on day one on a lot cheaper contract, but we'll see. I'm going to go Trenton Simpson, though. I think their linebackers need help, like, bad, and uh, he's good. He's probably the only guy I really want to take in the first round. <clears throat> Pardon me, but I think that just helps their defense. They need it, so I'll go with that, but I was considering Michael Mayer there as well. Now here, for the Chargers, another team that I wish there was a receiver here worth taking, uh, Herbert is so talented. Everybody knows that. Uh, Joe Lombardi holds him back so badly. They run sticks way too often. They, they, I can't stand watching that offense, to be honest with you. As an Austin Eckler fantasy owner, I appreciate the fact that they only throw checkdowns all damn game, but it's not good for the Chargers. Herbert is a guy that should be stretching the field. You should take shots way more than they do. His average depth of target is like dead last in the league, which is silly. It's not dead last, but it's like third last. I do not understand the way they run that offense, and I hope for all Chargers fans, making the playoffs does not convince them to keep uh, Lombardi. Honestly, Staley is okay. If Sean Payton is available, though, I would rather do that. I hope Telesco realizes that and gets a new coach or at least a new OC because Herbert needs to be fully unleashed. And what I'm getting at, I know I talk a lot. I'm sorry. I just like to talk through my thought process here. And uh, – they need a field stretcher. They need a receiver with some speed. Guyton is the only guy. Jalen Guyton is the only real speed receiver they have, and he's been out with an injury. So Keenan Allen and Mike Dubb are good players. They're not fast, either one of them, and they're just not game-breaking receivers. Uh, Keenan Allen is, again, he's just not a fluid athlete anymore. He is slow. He understands dead zones. He understands uh, you know, how to get open, how to get open in zone coverage, and he understands how to play football still. He's a very smart receiver. He's going to... Still get receptions, get yards. He's a guy that you can rely on, but he'd be a great two. I do not think he should be the one for Herbert, especially in the offense they need to be running right now. And again, it just sucks that there's not a fast receiver here. I mean, there is. Both of these guys are fast. But do you want to take them this high? I'm torn on it, to be honest. And I think my answer is no. I just think it's a little rich. I don't know, man. It's also like the next pick is Baltimore. Are they going to do the same thing? Receivers got to start going at some point, right? Pardon me, but uh, I, I think Michael Mayer is just such a good value pick right here that I'm going to do it. I'm going to take Michael Mayer. Again, doesn't fit what I just said they need. He's not like a speed stretch the field receiver, but he's another receiving option. He's a good receiver. He's a great blocker, a great player. I think there's value where they got him. So it's enough to make me not feel like I'm reaching. So, Baltimore, we're going to reach. If you want to keep Lamar Jackson, draft a damn receiver. You have to. Like, it. you can't even consider not. Jalen Hyatt was a great riser this year. I mean, dude came out of nowhere, but he's talented. He's a good deep threat. I like Jalen Hyatt. I like Josh Downs a little more, though, I think. They're very close, man. I'm in, even on here, I'm 34 and 35. 
essentially, in my opinion, they're not the same player, like, as far as, like, their play style and everything. But they're the same player to me as far as, like, you're taking a receiver in this range. Like, you're happy with either one. They're both very good. For Baltimore, I think I'd rather take Josh Downs. I think he's a great separator. He can change direction very quickly. I just like him a lot. I kind of, I've seen some comps to T.Y. Hilton. And again, I'm a Colts fan. I've watched T.Y. Hilton play. He's my favorite player ever. And I kind of like that comparison. And I think he's a smaller guy, but he's fast. He can run good routes. He's going to change direction quick. He's going to accelerate quick. He's going to make splash plays. So that's what you need if you're Baltimore's offense. Goodness, they need to do something about their offensive scheme. It's bad. But Josh Downs hopefully helps a little bit. Again, it's a reach. I understand that completely. But someone's going to have to reach and get a receiver. Their Receivers are valuable. You're going to need one, especially if you're the Ravens. You can't not take a receiver again. Now, Denver, uh, they ended up getting another first-round pick, trading Bradley Chubb because uh, they weren't originally supposed to have one. But this is an interesting pick. Uh, no quarterbacks worth taking, but uh, I don't know what they go here. Honestly, they definitely do not have a good offensive line. Their defense I wouldn't touch. They obviously could go defense. There is some... Uh, players they could take, but I think, honestly, it would make more sense to go offense here. It wants me to take Nolan Smith, and I like Nolan Smith, and I get it. They traded Chubb, but their defense, their offense needs help. Their defense is good. But, man, I don't know. There's not really any offensive players worth taking here, though, is there? I'm not reaching for Hyatt here. I mean, they could use receiving help, but do I think he's going to be the clear one there? Probably not, especially not day one. Yeah, there really isn't any offensive players worth taking. This is an awkward spot for Denver, the way I have it set up. I'm not taking B. John Robinson. They still hope Javante is good after his injury. So I guess I am going to go Nolan Smith to replace Bradley Chubb. I mean, I guess you're okay with it. This is a pick you got for Bradley Chubb, uh, so you just get cheaper at edge. But I would have preferred uh, an offensive lineman probably, but there's none that I really love here. So I guess I'm just going to take Nolan Smith. I don't. I don't dislike this. I just, uh, they're a pick that I'm never really quite sure what to do with. Now this one, Dallas, another do I reach for a receiver pick. I really think their receiver depth could use help. I know it could. Uh, but they also need help in the secondary bad. So I'm going to go Clark Phillips. I do not see a world where they don't take a corner in the first two rounds this year. I think they kind of have to. They're a good roster all around, but their corners, man, they are kind of brutal at times Trayvon Diggs is good obviously uh, but past that man it just gets rough like they don't really have anybody out there worth putting out there so I'm gonna take Clark Phillips for sure need a good corner too I like him he's a good talented guy so especially not having to follow the one they got Trayvon Diggs there he should be fine in Dallas I think he'd be good day one so I'm just not gonna overthink it now Cincinnati we're getting close to the end uh pick 27 who do they want? Now, Joe Mixon is a guy I've seen a lot of uh, people saying they could get rid of him to save money because they're not going to be able to pay T. Higgins and Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow. Like, those three are just expensive. They're not going to be able to have all three on big contracts. So I've seen a lot of people suggesting getting rid of Mixon in order to make some extra money. But uh, I'm not quite sure where I stand on that. If they did that, B. John Robinson's interesting here. But I think you got to go offensive tackle here. I, I would. And Anton Harrison is the next best. I agree with how they have it ranked here. There's not, again, I mean, if you're looking on the board with me, there's just not any other guys I love in this class. So Anton Harrison is the last, like, first-round tackle in my opinion. So I don't think you overthink it. They need line help. I'm just going to take them and be happy they got someone worth taking. Kansas City. Now, this is a weird pick for sure. Uh, obviously a good team. Because they have Patrick Mahomes, there's obviously some places they could upgrade. I like the idea of getting a receiver. They need a receiver that could really, like, you know, change the game. But I don't know that they're going to be able to do that here. I Maybe I will. I like going edge as well. Edge makes sense. Karloftis has been good. Obviously, uh, Chris Jones still gets you pressure. But they could use another good edge rusher. Their defense has not been the best. They have a solid receiving room. I would assume they bring Juju back. Juju back, pardon me. He is on a one-year deal, though. But I, I might I might just go Jalen Hyatt. They could use a fast, game-breaking receiver. Again, 
I'm not saying he's a for sure game breaker. It's late first round, but I think it makes sense. I think they could use a uh, guy they hope becomes their one. He's not going to become Tyreek Hill, but a reliable one, considering Travis Kelsey is actually the one, he'd be the two. So I like that. Uh, Minnesota at 29. This is another interesting one. Not exactly sure what I want to do for sure here. Uh, there's a couple things you could do. I definitely would like to go defense. Their defense is abysmal. It is so, 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 so bad. Like, it, it's not even funny how bad it is. I want to help the secondary. Uh, Hitman Harry's getting a little older. They took a uh, sign last year, so I don't know if they go safety again this year. Otherwise, I, I like Brian Branch a lot. I honestly don't know how much longer I can let him keep falling, but again, no team has come up that I really think needs to go safety. Uh... So I'm kind of tempted here to go Witherspoon. I like him, and they take corners, it feels like, every year. They took Booth last year, but their defense is just never getting better. They need they need help, so I'm going to go Witherspoon. It makes sense to me. They just they got to help that defense, man. They got to get Kirk some help. I say Kirk. They got to get Justin Jefferson some help. But here we are with Buffalo. This is everybody's favorite pick. They say safety, I understand, but... I'm tempted to go O-line as well. They could definitely use a guy like Osiris Torrance in the interior. But I kind of want to get fun. I, I kind of want to... There's no way B. John Robinson makes it out of the first round. He probably goes earlier than this. But again, there's a lot of teams that, like, if you're taking a running back, it's kind of a luxury pick. It has to be a... We're good enough to where I can take the chance on taking a very dynamic running back and don't really have any other holes to fill. The Bills aren't necessarily that. They do have holes to fill. The defense is good. O-line is not great. Run game's not good. And past digs, their pass catchers are not very good. Gabe Davis is overrated. Isaiah McKenzie's not that good. Dawson Knox has games. I don't love him. Uh, Cole Beasley's back, but, like, who cares? Bijan Robinson just sounds like it makes sense to me. He adds an extra element to the offense. If you've got to worry about Bijan Robinson and Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs, I think it might put that offense in a tier that you're like, oh shit, we can't stop their offense and their defense is really good. I think it could really propel them into that tier of like borderline unbeatable where you're like, okay, the Bills are on our schedule. We're going to chalk that up as a loss. So I'm going to do it. There's other positions I think they could use, but there's not really anyone here at those positions that I love. If there was a receiver, I would take him but there's definitely not one worth taking. So I'm going to go B. John Robinson. For two years, everybody's been mocking the Bills, a running back, and uh, I'm finally going to give him one. B. John is obviously crazy good. Pardon me, but uh, he's a guy that, like, obviously there's going to be people saying that I waited too long to draft him. I'm a huge B. John fan, but I just, again, no team ahead of here needs a running back bad enough to uh, you know ignore the other holes. So that's crazy value for Buffalo. They'll be excited to get him, but that's what I'm going to go with. So Philly at 31. This is actually the last pick in the first round because the Dolphins forfeited theirs. They already got Christian Gonzalez, which I really like. Saying I should go Gibbs here. And I did not take Bijan at 10 because I don't think they will take a running back. Again, I was talking about taking Bijan as early as 10. Getting him at 30 is awesome for the Bills. I just, if it worked out that way, which it probably won't, he'll probably go higher than that, but they'd be ecstatic. But anyways, I'm not taking a running back in round one. I do not think the Eagles would want to do that. BJ Ojolari makes sense. Edge depth is never a bad idea. Let me make sure I'm not spacing anybody. Man. This is a weird pick because they're a team that, like, I don't know exactly what they want or need you know what I mean maybe they do go Gibbs man I'm honestly not that against it it's late in the first like the very last pick so maybe they rationalize it Miles Sanders might be gone so good pass catching back adds an element to that offense man I almost went Bijan but if you can get the second best running back and Christian Gonzalez fuck it I'll do it I'll give him Gibbs it's different. I don't know that they will take him, but that's what I would do, so I'm going to go with it. Houston at 32. This is technically the first pick in the second round, but it says I did good on these picks. Thanks, uh, NFL Mock Draft Database Simulator. I got Bryce Young and Quentin Johnson, which I really like. Now what I would want to do is uh, just take the best player available, probably. The defense needs help. 
I don't know that safety is worth taking if you're the Texans because, again, it's kind of one of those positions where, like, they could be very good and it could help your team a lot, but it's almost a luxury pick where, like, if you got other holes, probably fill those before you fill safety. So I kind of want to go B.J. Ojolari or Dexter here. I, I I don't know, though. I like Brian Branch a lot, and I feel like leaving him out of the first round is a little bit disrespectful. So... It's the second round now, so I'm gonna go. I'll just I'll give him Brian Branch. Too good of a player to pass on. I think the value here at 32 is good. So I think they're happy with this draft class. Bryce Young, Quentin Johnson, Brian Branch in the first 32 picks. It's really good for the Texans. So that's it. That's my first round and first pick of the second round mock draft. First go around for 2023. I appreciate you watching. Sorry that I talk a lot. That's kind of how I do it. I like to walk through and talk about everything I'm thinking my thought process, and there's probably some things I would change if I went back and did it, but again, I did it live, I talked myself through it, I didn't have a script, so I hope you enjoyed, I probably will drop a scripted one where I kind of go through and make my picks before, and it'll be uh, a shorter video, but if you watch this, I really do appreciate it, thank you very much, please go ahead and subscribe, and drop a like on the video, comment what you thought about your team's pick, let me know if it was terrible, or if you like it, or what you think, uh, again, thank you, I really appreciate it so much, I put a lot of work into this kind of thing, so Hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll be dropping another mock draft here soon as well as some more content. I think my next video, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the uh, quarterback prospects and what I think more in-depth and my rankings of the top five QBs. So, again, thank you for watching. Hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Hope you did have a wonderful Christmas. And uh, have a happy new year, and stay safe.